So, under these planks are my both are both my straps for uh, yeah the shoulder straps, and we got some contact cement uh, under the yeah in the straps are contact cement just like here basically the 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 uh, leather sandwiched in with the glue in between. And uh, the more I look at this uh, this setup, the more I think I have no idea what I'm doing. <laughs> I don't know how all this is going to turn out, but it'll be something. All right, so I, th I decided that I needed some pockets on the exterior of the rucksack. So same principle, made a template to see what it would look like. So this, I think, should do the trick. So fold it in here for more sol uh, solidity. And then the cover, that will go right on top of this. So, what you make? So we're gonna start by choose an appropriate piece. Oh, see, this is not so bad. I didn't know how many pockets I was gonna be able to do, but uh, based on this, quite a few. I think we'll start with one for sure. And then, because uh, this in the front, I wouldn't mind one on each side. The bag's already pretty bulky, but we need pockets. Bushcrafts always need. Set of these lines. There. All right. So by using the cardboard for the cut for the to know where the slits go, we will. <laughs> Is it going to work? I don't know. Alright, so this is supposed to flap up this way and we'll close. Oh, let me see. We'll, we'll be sewing it this way. Did we go too wide? Too small because once I pinch this it's gonna be taking a bit of the pouch away it's gonna this is eventually gonna fold in this this way so 
same thing for this. Uh, this way. Cause just gotta fill it up inside out. First try, right? So I guess we'll see what it does at the end. All right, so I made some progress. A lot of stitching. Did a couple of pouches for the front. Some of them worked out better than others. So pouch closing. We'll have a little strap. from the inside to kind of tie it down. The bag's coming along nicely. So, I put in a liner with uh, an extra piece of leather in the inside and another piece on the bottom there. I find it, it added some nice rigidity because before it would, the bag would just kind of just flop down as soon as you let it go so it makes it nice and stiff um, I'll be putting some stitching around this is just glued but I'll be putting stitching around the side and then uh, putting some holes just all along so that I can get a piece of, of leather strung through and from here to just tie it taut to close it up um, the top part I'll probably be doing last once I see how everything falls. What I've been working on last several hours have been the straps. They've come up pretty nice. So just two pieces of leather. Sorry, one piece of this is one piece of leather that was twisted over from the outside to come in and then hand stitched. So I glued it first to add even more strength to it. And then it was, uh, then I hand stitched it all along the sides. Attached to the back. And that's another reason why I wanted to double it up because it'll add even more rigidity, solidity to being able to support whatever, how much weight that I need. So these straps come up into a secondary strap, which is what I'm working on now. Um, so it comes up to a secondary strap, which has these little holes in it. And the way that I was seeing that work, I have some really nice wood from uh, another project, uh, Zebra Wood, that just looks amazing with anything I do it with. And so I decided to make these types of dowels just attached with a pair of paracord to a strip of leather. So this will go to the bottom or to the side like this, right? And then when you put this on, this will come through one of these holes depending on wherever it feels comfortable. Like that. It's snug, and then once it's through, the cord. There we go. Sorry. So this holds it down. Simple as that. And though never done this before, but these, the pressure is going to be coming downwards, right, away from the cord. So, uh, sorry, away, away from the strap. So I st stitched these at the end to make that they don't make sure they don't str they don't keep ripping though honestly um, I try with just this is double ply right so there's two layers of leather to these straps and I tried with just one piece of, uh, of leather just by put, cutting a hole into it and pulling on this pretty much as hard as I could and it didn't even budge so this leather is really 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 strong but I want to be able to depend on it no matter what kind of situation or how much weight I have in this thing and I wouldn't want it to start ripping 
in the field. So, so this is pretty much where I'm at. And so we'll just I'll just keep the camera on for now and keep getting more footage. Realize that I've done quite a bit of work without without the camera on. Um, a lot of hand stitching. Um, I'm finding I'm really enjoying leather working in general. It's uh, I can what I like is that when I'm doing a woodworking project, it, there's no other, it's, there's nowhere else that I can do uh, my projects than in here. It's often needs uh, a lot of tools and it makes a mess and it's loud. Uh, for these pouches, I was able to still sp spend time with my family and, and uh, just sit down anywhere around the house with a uh, piece of leather in uh, my awl and uh, just work on it. So I find that was kind of neat. So So I still got these two these two uh slots to uh strengthen. One thing I didn't, that I was wondering at the beginning was when I started the hand stitch, was what knot, how to tie this this cord to the needle, um, and through quite a bit of looking, I found out there is no knot. It's simply the way that the that the needles formed, and the bulk of the thread too. So if I can just get this in here, sorry, there's a piece of. There we go. Okay. So once it's through, it's just the fact the way that the hole is made that as soon as you push the needle through the leather, it automatically just holds it. So I kept on trying to make different knots to tie this up, like uh, like just uh, like the old needle and thread for uh, clothing and no matter how I did the knot it would just snag into the leather it was just hor it was really difficult to do so once the hole is done let me just zoom in here a bit right so once this hole is done until now, I'm still using the 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 awl as the puncher if I need to do any like the just the needle stitching. But all of this, all of this bag, the, the whole bag has been done with the single stitch. This whole bag has been done with the, the single stitch uh, using the awl. So once I got the hole in, because this is just uh, I'm just doing this with the needle and thread. Once the hole is in, then. See how, as soon as it passed through, it doesn't lose, it's really strong. I can pull on that, and I'm not losing any thread. So I just made up a little pattern. probably lots of existing techniques to actually do what I'm trying to do, strengthen a cut in the, into the leather that's going to be taking strain, but I just figured a zigzag pattern across, over. You see here just one across and then I went around just tie that off. I have an idea so I got the cords in see how it's threaded but I don't want to be tying it up every time 
So I need a way to get this to be able to tie the top and quickly be able to tighten it up and and get it snug and tied off but be able to quickly take it off too. Um, so <clears throat> my idea is again you use this nice zebra wood I happen to have a, uh, a very thin waif piece that was cut off of another for another project and I'm thinking uh, I don't know if you can see that here. Happy face. Or kind of screamy face. So, if the uh, if one thread goes through one eye, and the other thread goes through the other eye, and then through back through the mouth, it, I should be able to kind of use that as a, kind of a buckle, and it should, uh, should hold. So, chisel I'll try it again lightly the chisel wants to separate the wood eh? so even if I go nice and easy just by hand there we go might be yeah it's probably better that way see a little out of time up here. have to cut the, the, uh, the strap any. There we go. That works fine there. What about the other 
other side. before we start doing the finishing. There. Now, I don't know if I'm complicating my life more than anything. So the idea would be I'd tighten this to the level that I needed to. Let's straighten that so, all right. so once I got everything packed, I'd straighten this out there, pull on each side, and get it where I want there, and I tug down here. There we go. And then when that pushed back. It does seem pretty snug, since now it's pushing against the back here and also the back of the mouth. So all that together is a lot of angles for the leather to go through. So I'm pretty happy with that. So coating. Now I use, this is uh, tongue and teak oil for uh, marine use, but I don't like, I don't want to use any kind of varnish because I don't, I want the grain to stay, stay rugged since it's going to provide better friction. Just a bit of this, you can put as many coats as you want. off the excess and here's a buckle see you later